Do you remember we made a video some time ago about seven and why seven is a weird number? And I showed you a way to work out how a number is divisible by seven. Uh, well, actually that's a very popular video. People come up to me about that video all the time. I thought I invented a better way and it turns out it was something that was known already. Of course it was. But I want to show you this better way to work out if a number is divisible by seven. So this even works for really big numbers. So I want to ask Brady for a really big number. Let's do something in the millions. Three, seven, one, four, two, eight, nine. So that is 3,714,289. I do not know if that number is divisible by seven, but we're going to work it out using this picture here. It's a nice looking thing. I want to show you how we can do it. So we're going to start with the leftmost digit, number three. And I'm going to go to number three on this clock face. I'm now going to move on to the next digit. When I move on, I travel on this red arrow here. So I've traveled to two. And now I'm going to add the next digit. It's a seven. Actually, this clock face only has seven numbers. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It takes me back to two. I'm now going to move on to the next digit. I travel the red arrow. It takes me to six. I add the next number. One. It takes me to here. I now travel the red arrow. It happens to go back to zero. I now add the next digit. Four. One, two, three, four. I travel the red arrow, it takes me to five, add the next number, it's a one and a two. Travel the red arrow, add the next, it's eight. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Travel the red arrow, add on that last digit, nine. I'll go all the way around, that's a seven, eight, nine. I've landed on five, and that's because the number that you've invented here isn't a multiple of seven but it has a remainder of five. It's five away from a multiple of seven. We should test if this has actually worked. I'm gonna get my calculator out. This is the easy way to figure out if a number is divisible this. by seven, did you say? Imagine this massive look. Now, you should look back at our original video. Uh, so this is a lovely way of doing it. So let's try this out. 3,714,289. So I'm saying this is five away. If I subtract five, We'll get this number instead, and I reckon this is a multiple of seven, which it is. It is exactly a multiple of seven. So yeah, I think this is much better and easier and quicker, especially for these really big numbers. So if we'd done this process, and if that number had ended on zero, then that means the number would have a remainder of zero, and that is a multiple of seven. So getting zero is multiple of seven. Anything else, not a multiple of seven, but it tells us what the remainder is as well, which is the other advantage over my uh, previous method. Do you carry one of these around with you in your pocket or? It's on my phone, yeah. You've got one on your phone, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, nice. So I wanna show you how it was made. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna start with a clock face. It's gonna have seven numbers on it, but starting from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, like this. So imagine I want to now start at zero, and I want to add a number on. So let's say I add 15. If I added 15, I would start at zero. I would add seven, which would take me back to zero. I could add another seven that takes me back to zero. I would then add one more and that would take me to one. And that's because 15 has a remainder of one after division by seven, right? So you ignore all the multiples of seven and there's one left over. That's what a remainder is. So this is telling us that 15 has a remainder of one. Well, I could do that for this really big number here, but this is just too big. I'm gonna to have to go round this clock face over and over and over again, right? Eventually I'll get there, but it's gonna be too long, right? Too difficult. So I'm gonna add some shortcuts. Let's say I'm on the number three. So let's say I wanna multiply by 10. So I wanna know what 30 is after division by seven. Well, 30 is 28 and two left over. I'm gonna put that in my shortcut. If I go from three to 30, it would have two left over. So this red arrow is representing multiplying by 10. So I'm going from three to 30, and 30 has two left over. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other numbers. If I start on one, multiply by 10, so that's 10, that's seven and three left over. So one, if I multiply by 10, would go to three. Two would be multiplied by 10 is 20, 
that's 14 and six left over. So the shortcut to go from two to 20 is going from two to six. And then I can do the other numbers. So four will take me to 40, which is 35 and five left over. It takes me here. Five times 10 is 50, which is 49 and one left over. Six times 10 is 60, which is 56 and four left over like that. And zero multiplied by 10. Well, that's gonna be zero. So that actually goes back to itself. So these red arrows represent multiplying by 10. So if I had a number, we'll do a smaller number. If you had a number like three, I'm making one up, 394. I could start from zero and then I could add three. One, two, three, I end up on three. And that tells me three has a remainder of three. No surprises there. I then go from three to 30 by traveling this red arrow, which takes me to two. I then add nine, which is 39. So I go all the way round, another two takes me to four. So now I know 39 has a remainder of four. If I multiply by 10, I travel the red arrow, which is 390, takes me to five. Tells me 390 has a remainder of five after division by seven, and then I add on my last digit, one, two, three, four, tells me 394 has a remainder of two after division by seven. Really nice. So that's how it works. Yeah. Does this have a name? Uh, yes. So it's called a division graph. So I thought I invented a thing, but I hadn't invented a thing. It's called a division graph. So it has been done before, but I do think it's really nice. Uh, really, you know, sort of useful way of finding if something's divisible by seven. And it tells you the remainder as well. There will be some people who will want to still do this as mental arithmetic. They'll just, they'll just want to do it without the picture. I like the picture, I think the picture's good. But if you want to do it with mental arithmetic, the same method can be done in your head. So you just think about multiplying by 10 and then adding the next digit. Multiplying by 10, adding the next digit. If your number is bigger than seven, just reduce it, make it smaller than seven. So we did 394. We could do it in our heads. Start with three times 10, 30, reduce it, two. I can do that in my head add the next digit, which is a nine. That's 11, too big, reduce it, gives me a four. Multiply by 10 is a 40, okay, that's a five left over, add the next digit, that's a nine, reduce it to. So you can do that in your head. Uh, oh, and I'll show you a nice thing, and this is just for the sevens because it's a, a nice small number. Uh, multiplying by 10 is the same as multiplying by three. You can see that from the picture. So if I have one and multiply by 10, I get a three. And if I had two multiplied by 10, I get a six. And if I had three multiplied by 10, I get a two, which is the same as having three times three, nine, which becomes a two. So multiplying by 10 is the same as multiplying by three. So you could do this mentally by multiplying by three and adding the next digit as you go along. That makes it easier, perfectly possible to do it in your head, but also I like the diagram, okay? So that's doing it for sevens, but the whole, like, now that you know the method, you can use this method for doing it for any number you want, including those awkward numbers, numbers like 13. So I'm gonna do one for 13. So I'm gonna have 13 numbers on my clock, starting at zero. So now we can fill in our shortcut arrows. The shortcut arrows means multiplying by 10. So we start with one, one times 10 is 10, which actually here is a number on the clock, so we can go straight there. So one becomes 10, two times 10 is 20, well that's 13 with seven left over. So two will go to seven, like this. Three would become 30, 30 is 26 with four left over. So three would become four, and then we can fill in the rest. Five goes to 11, six goes to eight, seven goes to five, eight goes to two, nine goes to 12, 10 goes to nine, 11 goes to six. So 12 goes to three and zero multiplied by 10 is still going back to itself. So dividing a number by 13 would be really awkward, but this, you can just follow the arrows round, you know, as many steps as there are digits and you will get to the remainder of zero will tell you it's divisible by 13 or otherwise. I really like these uh, and I think it's re really useful for knowing those awkward numbers. It's worth trying them out on the not awkward numbers. Some numbers are not awkward to work out if they're divisible. Nine is not awkward. The test for nine is quite easy. You add up the digits of the number, you reduce it so it's less than nine and that's the remainder. So you just add up the digits. 
If you actually look at the division graph, you might get an idea why that's true. So this is the division graph for 9. Same thing, we do our shortcut arrows. 1 times 10 is 10, which is 9, and 1 left over. So actually, 1 actually goes back to itself. 2, if we did 2, 2 times 10 is 20, which is 18, and 2 left over. So it actually goes back to itself. 3 times 10 is 30, is 27, and 3 left over. And you can see that's going to be true all the way around. These numbers just go back to themselves. It's always true. So 8 times 10 is 80. That's 72 plus 8 left over. And then the 0 always goes back to 0. So if we did this method, even if we used our big number here, starting on 0, add your first digit, takes me to 3. Travel the red line, takes me back to 3. Add the next digit, which is a 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Travel the red line, takes me back to 1. Add the next digit. It's the same as us adding up all the digits, which is another way of seeing why the division test for 9 works. Easy. Yeah. You've just made 7. You've solved the problem of 7. I've solved the problem of 7. I am loving this. I had the need to do this uh, recently. Uh, so our good mathematical friend Matt Parker was uh, working out a pi by hand recently and we needed to test his arithmetic. And so uh, using this sort of method, we are able to test that kind of hand-on arithmetic really quickly and also much more reliable than just trying it out all in our heads. If you enjoy number file videos, you're probably someone who loves mysteries and knowledge and solving problems. And if you want to go deeper into that world, why not check out all the great courses and questions and puzzles on Brilliant? It has an ever-expanding library of content, and it's all highly interactive, like this. Move things around, play with the interface. Don't just sit there passively and watch, get involved. And another thing I like about Brilliant is that sometimes it's funny, it's quirky, it's made with a smile. You'll get smarter, and you'll be guided by people who really enjoy their stuff. You can try everything on Brilliant for free for a full 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash numberphile. There's also a link in the description and a QR code there on the screen. By the way, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription by using that link. Our thanks to Brilliant for supporting Numberphile. Geometric mean, 1831. Sounds like squaring the circle, mm, okay. Yeah. So, uh, what has he done here? Well, first of, first of all, James, what is squaring the circle? This is a famous thing. Yeah. And if, if you're like Keith and haven't watched Number File, you won't have seen James's excellent video right. on squaring the circle. Yeah, well, and squaring the circle, now known as, a, as an expression for something that's impossible, 